and we're back to free code camp I looked at the certification projects and I wanted to do this one the calculator I'm going to do the other ones in the future at some point but this one tweaked my interest so I was more keen on doing that read through the user story yourself something like this is what we're going to create I'm not going to go over these design features I'm just going to give it a basic outline and then you can design it the way you want I've decided to try this one here code pen so it's a different code editor normally I use notepad so I'm just going to post a link to my code pen a very specific that we're going to create here in the video description but I have to be honest and say that I'm not really familiar with the features here that much so it's my first real try at using this I don't believe that I don't have to write all of this basic stuff that belongs to the hat right here but let me try it anyway so the usual stuff metaphor jar set title name so that we have it responsive with the viewport and then in the body I want to create the basic structure Let me check here, it seems to run automatically from time to time, so whenever I put something new inside of the code here, it's going to run a couple of seconds after. When it comes to the specific IDs, they are given in FreeCodeCamp, so read through the user story and you'll find them. For example, calculator, display, clear, and the ones for the numbers, so all of the buttons that we're going to create. Hardest part here is to not make a typo. And I'm going to order them the very exact same way that they're ordered in my numbers on the keyword. So 7, 8, 9, then 4, 5, 6, then 1, 2, 3. And a 0 button is going to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to add a specific class to this.
Let me check out the CSS. I want to see if I can paste it here. But it seems to work. Let me adjust the display. So this is a div container that contains the zero right now on the right. As I've said, I'm just going to add a couple of basic design features. Now let me style the buttons. And as I've mentioned, I want to style the button for zero a little bit differently. Let me give it a different color and you can see the zero class, it targets only this button. And the only thing that I want to do is to make it a little bit bigger so that it spans for two buttons and 116 should be a good value. So that covers two buttons and the gap, we've got that covered too. Let us move on to the non-number buttons. Clear, operate and equals, the top six buttons. I just want to add a different background color. The numbers and the decimal button, I give them a different background color. And maybe I add a simple hover effect so when we hover over these that the background color changes, I make it a little bit darker. 
and it seems like everything works here in CodePen. But I believe I can actually cut that out. Let me try. And now I have this CSS part. And it's automatically connected to the HTML. So I can just paste it here and it runs. So let me get rid of the style. We don't need it here. And now we'll take care of the script. So the actual JavaScript code that we need to make this KQ data run. Let me add the script tags. Once I've written it all and checked for typos, I'm going to go over this once more. And as I've said, I'm going to link to it so you can check out the code there. In general, we are just going to create a couple of functions that allow us to perform actions when we click on the buttons. At first, we're going to target our display. So yet again, this field where the zero is currently, and we need three variables. It's always current input, previous input, and the operator. You can see it as simple math operations and a calculator always needs these three values. And then we always have to update our display. Let me write this function now. So update display can be written like this. We just set the text content of the display to our current input. So when we, for example, click on 8, this should be shown. We need a function for clear, which is the AC button. When we click on it, we want the current input to be reset to zero or to empty in this case. Previous input needs to be empty as well. And finally, the operator needs to be empty, but we're not done. We also have to call the update display function so that we have the zero again showing when we click on AC. But this should be enough for this function. We want to be able to append numbers. Currently we could only, for example, have 8 plus 7, but maybe we want to have 18. So there needs to be a way to append that number. We use an if and we'll check our current input. And if this is equal to zero, so what this code does is it basically checks what the input is, and if we have a number in our input and we click on a button again, a number button is going to be added to our number.
we need to find a way to use a decimal. But this only needs to be appended when there is no decimal in our display. Our calculator should be able to write 3.2, but not 3.23.5. We only want to have one decimal allowed. So we need to check if there is already a decimal. And if there is none, we can edit with plus equals and then we need to update the display. Now we set the operator. And when we click on operator, we want to make the previous input, the current input, and the current input is empty again. So let's say we want to write a 7 times 5. 7 would be the current input, and then we click on multiply, and then 7 becomes the previous input, and current input gets empty so that we can make it a 5. Now comes the part where we actually calculate this stuff. But we need to fulfill a couple of conditions. As I've said, we need three variables for a math operation. We need the previous input and it can't be empty. We need the current input. It can't be empty and we can't have an empty operator. So current operator can't be empty either. And if these three conditions are true, we can perform our math operations. For that to work, we need to convert our numbers, our inputs. So previous and current input needs a pass float. And then we'll store it in number one and number two. We'll define results and set it to zero from the start. And now I've simply used the switch for our four cases. We've got plus, minus, multiply and divide. So we need to check our current operator and then we have the four cases plus, minus, multiply and divide.
when we're not done here in this function calculate, whenever we have calculated, we need to set the current input to uh, the result to string. Previous input, it is reset. Our operator, it also needs to be reset. And finally, we also have to update the display. So don't forget that. Once we've clicked on equal, every, everything needs to be reset or updated in the case of the display. Currently we've just done it in the background, but we need to now define that this actually runs when we click on the buttons. Our event is usually the click. First up is for clear. So when we get the element by ID clear, which is the button, and we click on it, then the clear function is executed or run. We have the same structure for the decimal. When we click on this button, the append decimal function is run. Right here. But let me keep the correct order. So after clear, we didn't have the append decimal, we had the append number first. So let me add that. We use the class selector number. And for each button, btn, our event is still a click. And this time we'll use our pen number. And we use the same structure again, but let me put it below the append decimal so that I keep the same order. Here's our operator. And we need to set the operator when we click. Right here, that was the set operator, the fourth function. We've got everything covered before the calculation. And this is what we use now. In this case, the element by ID is equals. So when we click on equals, our calculate function should be called right here. And finally, don't forget to update the display. And this should be it. I believe I can paste that into the JS section here. And now everything works. Again, I'm new to using CodePen, but it seems like you can paste this directly into this menu and you can get rid of the script in your HTML section. Let us go over it once again. Now that you can see that everything works, 
So we've got our display set up, three values, current input, previous input, current operator. We always need to update the display whenever we click on something and the current input will be shown. When we, for example, click on clear, current input is empty, therefore nothing is shown. Previous input is empty current operator as well. An update display is run. Next up, we've got a pen number. We can type in an 8, and if we click on 5 afterwards, our current input isn't empty, therefore we are in the else case. And plus equals is triggered, therefore we see 8.5. A pen decimal works, I click on it, add numbers, it works, but if I click on it a second time, it doesn't work, as the if condition becomes false. I've got 856.5, and if I add a point now, it isn't shown. Let's check the set operator function. This is going to set our current operator. When the current input is empty, we shouldn't be able to perform an operation or set the operator. It wouldn't make sense. You would have, for example, 5 plus empty or 5 divided by empty. It doesn't make sense. Here's the calculation. This is going to get triggered whenever we click on equals, set it up into four cases, and after every calculation, we need to set the current input to result, reset the previous input and the operator, and obviously update the display. And the code below, it is used to make everything work whenever we click on these specific buttons. So here we've got the clear button, we click on it, we've got a reset. Then we've got the number selector for appending numbers. So this also works. Then we've got the decimal, so when we click on this button, we have append decimal run. It works. We've got our set operator, this also works. Let us, for example, divide this by two. You can see it stores the divider as the current operator and it runs. Then we've got the equals, which runs the calculate function. And then we update the display. Check out my code pen and you can see the code in your browser. As far as I can tell, they're all public. So I don't have to do anything to make it public. But if you can't see it and there is something that I've missed, let me know. I'll update the name to Free Code Camp Calculator Project. And what's this? I can paste the head stuff right here, so I don't need to have it in this HTML menu. I can paste it right here. And then let me get rid of body, script and HTML, and this should be it.
I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.